thing was like fucked up shit. Warmed Should over. We... Death chilled over. Ew, gross. Straight out of the mortuary. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to Creative Happy Hour. We have not tasted this nasty ass looking piece of shit cocktail that we're calling Corpse, Corpse Reviver Reviver. number two. Number two is right. Yeah, this Cheers one is. Cheers to this shit. Mm, oh my we'll God. See. Okay, let's taste it. Oh, do we have to? Okay, honestly, it's kind of tasty. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, well, cheers Ooh. again. Cheers. You're Micah. I'm Micah, and you're Karina. That's me. <laughs> and we're corpses today. We decided to go full on goth for yes. our creative happy hour because rather than simply getting drunk on the creative possibilities this time, we decided that we're going to talk about coming back from the brink of creative death. I love this. Right? So hence, the corpse reviver. Yes. You want to tell us a little bit something about... <laughs> you want to tell us a little bit something? Just bear, bear with us. We're half dead here, We're okay? Dead. I, mean, I just came back from Austin. <laughs> I'm like freaking dying. It was South by Southwest, and I feel like I've been like crucified by a stupid little logo and everything. Yes, I talk too much. Too Way much too talking much. will just it does. put you it's in not, an early grave. Definitely. I like this. I want you to keep going with this whole <laughs> no like pun deathly intended. pun thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell us all about Corpse Reviver number Number two. two. Number so two. So let's talk about it. Okay. We'll talk about the ingredients first. Yes. So number one, mm. gin. So it's equal parts, yeah. one ounce per drink. So we did two ounces, obviously. Makes it easy. When you're hungover, you want simplicity. So yes. equal parts is good. Equal parts. You don't want to get, you know, you don't want to do math, okay? No, no. no math. No, no. no. Basic math. So the gin, which is our fave, and we're not going to name names, but, you know. Oh, Hend yeah, we're just going to hold it up. Hend Hendrix. We Hendrix. like it. It's very, very good. Okay, what's our second ingredient? So the kochi. Kochi. Kochi, kochi vermouth. Kochi, kochi, it's another vermouth. And this vermouth tends to have citrus flavors, herbal flavors. Ooh. Yeah, it, it, Which goes well with I our whole Because I was looking. I was like, lemony. where do you have vermouth? But apparently this is... This is the bomb. This, this is the bomb. bomb. This is really... Yes. Okay. So this is a very beautiful vermouth. It I, is. I love vermouth. Yes. And then we have Cointreau. Cointreau. Love it. And... Um, it's beautiful. It is, and it's lovely, and it's kind of citrusy as well. It's a whole other yes, citrusy kind of There's a whole citrusy realm. thing going on. We got a citrusy on. theme. Like we're feeling very revived. I mean, I, yeah. I kind of feel like I kind of needed this. I feel yeah, like it's a little, you know, it's bring like, me back it's from like the brink. Orange juice in the morning. Corpse, Corpse reviver, reviver number two. In the evening. Whenever, really, anytime. Right? <laughs> really, <laughs> yes. totally. Um, and then. Oh, Lilette. Lille. 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 She's French. I'm yeah. not. <laughs> yes. Um. Which we should have. Which yeah, it looks is beautiful. A and French actually, aperitif. And you can drink this straight. And I think that maybe we'll do the whole. Ooh, we could do a whole Frenchy French theme. One of yeah, these we days should. And do Lille straight. In fact, I'm thinking maybe next time let's just yeah, like, let's not do that. Ourselves. I'll bring some brie. Yes. You know? Oh my God, I love it. Let's yeah, do it. So let's do that. Yeah. Okay. It's that kind of day. And then we, finally, we oh, do a yes. splash of uh, absinthe. absinthe. Yes. And this is for that whole the hallucinogenic. Brunette. It's classic. And it's it, the Green it, Fairy. With the it's wormwood or the vermouth. Vermouth. vermouth? It's it's the classic green fairy. This is like the yes, old this is original. Um, yeah, it's our traditional absinthe, and it's supposed to make us hallucinate. Which so I like it. You know, it's nice that. to do that. You know, once every in once a while. while just, once in a while, much needed. Yeah, I agree. I like you it. know. I like okay, it. so those are the ingredients plus citrus, lemon juice, plus lemon juice, and we could have garnished it, but we were too freaking lazy. We were busy. We were busy to prepare to yes. talk to you. Exactly. Yes. So therefore, let's tell you about let's the tell history you about, of the corpse. Reviver. Should we tell them about the taste? First. Oh yes, let's we talk can. about the taste. We can do that. Let's the taste, taste it. is let's very do. complex. It's just an though... example. Like it's, it's an excuse to drink it again. I know. It's, what it, it's like it's so much better seeing all the ingredients that went into it and the color. The I was color thinking, is going to be revolting. It is, and it's, it's not. It's it good. looks like pond mm -hmm. water. I mean, this pond it, it could have mm. the name pond water. It in. could, and I would believe it. It's so good. It's like um, yum. The the citrus is lovely. Like, that's what hits me first, but it's floral. Yeah, the gin kind of wraps itself Ooh, around your tongue. Oh, it wraps itself around. Yeah. Kind of yeah. like your little snake ring. Ooh, like my your little, snake, little goth little snake. Goth snake. Yes, yes, indeed. So it's like a serpent. It is. It is like a serpent. And I love that idea of the serpent because that whole serpent biting its own tail, mm. the Uroboros, oh. <laughs> is such a great analogy for that whole death and rebirth 
concept. Uh, yeah, yes. That the artist is this. constantly. I know, like all of a sudden, this is I mean, very this, inspired. Yeah, this <laughs> drink is is going to right. It, yeah. it does that. Like when we started, we were both kind of dead. We were and now downtrodden. We, yeah, very. very but close now, to death. well, you got professional makeup done by a I did year by old, a sixteen year old. I was just trying to deal with my. So eyes. don't get used to this. No, because it's not like yeah. Wait. So I'm thinking that we might kind of step we it up. Hire and, and a 16 go, year old. We will. We will hire 16 year olds. I mean, if you're a 16 year old and you're watching this, thank you so freaking much. First of all, please tell um, all your friends to follow. Tell us. all your friends. We don't care if they're just doing it to mock us. Like that's we don't care. Fine. We have we, no shame. We have no shame or none, pride. None. But um, come to our makeup. I mean, please hell yeah. Please come to like, my makeup. We, oh, and mine too, please. Like when I don't have a full on yes. allergy attack going she on. She doesn't okay. have any. She looks. Fabulous. Yeah. Fabulously yeah. dead. <laughs> yes. Fabulously <laughs> dead, darling. So, so yeah, now, now that we've tasted it, so what else do we have? We have citrus, we have floral, we have the gin wrapping itself around our tongues like serpents, which mm. I love. Um, what else? Is there? Herbal. Herbal. Yeah, very you herbal. get the aperitif right. of the lilay. It's, lilay. Yeah, it's very like medicinal. It is. Right? It I'm, is. I'm liking it. I needed this. This is the medicine that I actually, <laughs> you know, it's rare that we have one of these sessions that I actually needed that drink quite so much. And today, yeah, not the same for me. I'm usually, I think, oh, no, no mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. I'm not usually, I'm mm -hmm. not much of a drunk. Um, I mean, yeah, I am. Okay, so maybe I am. It's right. It's okay. Fine. It's okay. So the history of this thing, yeah, basically just hangover cure, right? Right. So it was, you know, as early as 1861, this shows it's up a in literature. I mean, people have been getting drunk and hungover for ever. For a long time. Yeah, I forever. mean, even yeah. before... 1861. Before that, I, w I agree. But then there was that Savoy uh, bartending book, right? Yes. The, the, from the hotel mm -hmm. that was that big classic. And yeah, that it was, was a the cocktail thing. book. The most, oh, it has the most enduring legacy. Ooh. This drink. 1930, wow. Harry Craddock. Yes. yes. On the scene, and he kind of created. The Corpse Reserver one and two. Yes, there's a one, there's a two, there's there's and there's a two point something. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of. Um, Different Little versions. versions. They would tweak it. Yeah, they well, tweak they're, it. They're all different. quite different. I just think that like the the main you know mm -hmm. point of them is to get you unhungover. Yeah, to and bring you back from the dead. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Theoni. So we're back with our third bitch for our yeah. question number, number two. <laughs> okay, you had something awesome. So quote, so basically right? they back. would talk about yeah. So they would talk about the course survivor was this drink that you you know you would take you would have it. After you were out all night the night before, and then you wanted to go out again and drink with Hell your yeah. friends, Hell and yeah. so you were pretty much announcing to the group that you were like, you were out all night last yes. night. It's, yeah, you're and just you're basically proving that you're dissolute. You're proving yeah. that you are a completely trashy individual. Yeah, <laughs> you're drunk. Like, I mean, your standards. You're and the drunk artist. The, the artist. I mean, you're I think the artist. That, that that whole stereotype of, of the artist is a total freaking drunk. I yeah. mean, it's it's endured. There might be a reason for that. Well, yeah. I mean, yes. if anything, it gives you an excuse to drink. But essentially, that totally was what the does. drink was for. And then, yes. basically, there's a point where once you have four of these, yeah, you know, it plan. basically says four of these taken in succession <laughs> will unrevive the corpse again. I can see that so happening. So then you're... <laughs> You're Basically back to right back to where one. you started. Again, that divine right. circle. <laughs> yes. The serpent eating the tail. <laughs> exactly. In perfect example perfect of example. That, of I that. love that. I love that. Well, so we're we're going now to thinking about the whole artistic, you know, I'm getting licked. It's kind of gross, but kind of nice. Oh, he's um, your dad. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, ooh, dead meat. Um, <laughs> so we read this really cool uh, essay, actually, yes. by um, Henry Miller. Henry Miller, yes. He was kind of dissolute. And well, cool. he was the, you know, he's kind of the quintessential artist. Exactly. And he wrote this amazing essay, which I think I should read because I can't remember a damn thing about it. But it was all about what an artist is and what that whole, you know, life identity of an artist. And I thought it, it was actually very appropriate to this. And I've got a dog on my lap, but I'm going to read it because. So, yeah, tell us the name of the article. The article was called Creative Death, which is, there you go. I mean, it's on theme. People. It's on theme. And I can't really claim, you know, responsibility. I basically Googled Creative Death. <laughs> <laughs> and this popped up. Isn't that a beautiful thing? <laughs> so, yes. So, Creative Death. So, basically, it is an unfinished book. I think he might have died before he finished uh. it, which is... I mean, at my house, all his books are unfinished. Right. I know. I know. Oh, God. oh, just because I didn't read them. But... Well, Yeah. 
No. I no, I was a bigger fan. I read <laughs> everything that Anna East Nin wrote. Well, yeah, but we liked Anna East Nin. I think that the only reason we actually dealt with Miller was for Anna East Nin, wasn't it? Totally. Poor girl. Totally. I, I mean, only she... loved Henry Miller through the eyes right. of Anna East Nin. Like, That's she it. Because she thought he was awesome. So yeah. there, therefore so, we thought we needed to. I mean, if to. she loved him, I loved him. Exactly. So, okay, here he is. Creative Death, an essay unfinished about D.H. Lawrence. Very self-referential. Which I love D.H. Lawrence. Now, yeah, I did no, read totally. some D.H. Yeah, Lawrence. Yeah, exactly. And, and actually, that was kind of funny because after that, I read this whole article about why is art dead? And it was all because it was <laughs> so self-referential and it's so circular. It was like, nobody's just a reader or a listener or an enjoyer of art anymore. Everybody's working on their projects and everybody, you know, you can't have a band that's just listened to, like you've got to photograph them and you've got to right. interview them and write about them, you know, and you can't be a writer without having to collaborate on projects. And it's like, therefore everything's dead because it's so pointless. And I was like, that's a little harsh. Mm. See, I thought it was the opposite. Make that guy a drink. Right? Seriously, yeah. He needs a, a carb drink. survivor. I mean, let's he be does. honest. He does, come on, seriously. Debbie I agree. Downer. Right? A little Debbie Downer. But we'll go into that a little later. So this is the essay, the, a few quotes. I just thought it was super cool because he said, strange as it may seem to say today, the aim of life is to live and to live means to be aware, joyously, drunkenly. Cheers, Cheers Henry that. Miller, yes. Art Rip, right. rest right. in peace. Exactly, serenely, <laughs> divinely aware. In mm -hmm. this state of godlike awareness, one sings. In this realm, the world exists as a poem. No why or wherefore, no direction, no goal, no striving, no evolving. Definitely um, drinking. <laughs> yeah, he goes, this is the sublime, the amoral state of the artist. He who lives only in the moment, the visionary moment of utter far-seeing lucidity. Such clear, icy sanity that it seems like madness. Oh, isn't that nice? It's really nice. Yeah, and yeah. I thought the madness part was also cool because the, you know, absinthe, which of course we're going to dedicate a whole entire episode yeah, to Yeah, that's that going to be a whole But that thing. is like the madness drink of artists yes. by Exile. Cheers again because... Cheers. I thought that quote was amazing, so we can congratulate oh, ourselves no, for our I mean, excellent Google skills. I right? love it. Wasn't love that good? That, yeah. So I thought that was really cool, like the idea of the artist as atemporal. And therefore, if you're completely against the whole concept of time, you're, you Which as an artist... Am. Yeah, I'm, I'm against it. I'm feeling that I'm very good. Today, it was against me, but <laughs> <laughs> I think that... That whole idea of being able to suspend time and suspend all of this judgment and, you know, it be, things do become very clear, don't you think? Yeah, and when you start thinking about death or becoming a corpse, then then you are essentially, you're, you're putting, you know, you're you're reviewing what you're doing, you're referencing what you're doing mm -hmm. with this end point of dying. And you're when so you right. look at it like that, then you're like, okay, well, I better start doing something I want to do. It's Because eventually I'm going to die. Right. But I at think it's motivating. In the but, flesh. Yes. But I think that, that motivating yourself with that sort of an end point is going to limit you in some way. Like, I think that when you get into the zone, you know, when you're creating art, you get into the zone yeah, and totally. like, you just don't see anything else. You're just yeah. completely out of it. It's like you're drunk on the creative possibilities. Oh. Uh, yeah, no, it's like you're drunk. It's like you're in this zone where you're just completely out of it, but things become very extremely clear at the same time. They like do. Nothing matters, but everything does. Yeah, And I true. think that that's kind of the anti-death. And so I think that's really great because so many artists talk about being creatively dead or their creativity is dying or their art is dead, you know? And I think that it's such an obsession, but I think that really, if you're like fully into it, that whole death thing is irrelevant. Right? Well, yeah, I mean, Am you I can't, positive? no, I, I think so. Yes. I mean, you're, uh, I think that you, you can't give it that kind of power. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's like, um, who's that guy in, who's uh, that dude? who's that guy in Harry Potter, the, um, Voldemort. Voldemort. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just, you know, it's very Voldemort. You can't really, it's almost like you like can't, that. you know, the, like, why the, are you one, so obsessed with the me? one that can't be named. Yes. You yes. can't even speak the name. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's the same, I think in, in the with world death. of creativity is you're, you're obsessed with losing it. You're obsessed with yeah. like not being inspired anymore. And you're so obsessed and like writer's block. I mean, I'm writing that book about yeah. writer's block right now. People give it so much weight. It's the, it's like an obsession. And the yeah. more weight you give to death, the more weight you give to losing your creativity, the more weight you give to writer's block. Mm -hmm. Hell, you can't you give think? it any gravity. You, no. you have to just, you have to let it 
you know, you have to let it unfold. I completely and, agree. And I completely that, agree. And I love that whole self-referential thing about art because I think for me, I thought that this person was saying that art's dead because it's so self-referential was being mm -hmm. a little bit, you know, they were trying to kind of look for a reaction because I think that it's beautiful that people are collaborating. I think that that's I do too. one of the things when you are feeling this creative death that you're kind of on the brink of being like, what the hell am I doing? I think that that creative collaboration is one of the ways to reel yourself back from that precipice of being like, dude, I'm going to, you know, don't you think? That, well, like, yeah. And also, is it, yeah. And also, you know, I think it's saying that, oh, only certain people yes. should have access because they have maybe the funds or the materials or the, mm -hmm. and, and I actually think that now that that's been broken open and that anyone can be creative on that's it, right. then, you know, which is really our birthright. It, it, I would oh, argue so is. that it's being so creative is. is our birthright. In fact, For sure. it is essentially how we got here. Oh, completely. I you mean, know, it's we, creation. We come I mean, that's from a creative source. Absolutely. And so, well, I think that today we're very lucky because so many people say that all the effort has gone out of art. and Oh, my God, it's over because I can push a button and I can record a piece of music and I don't need to sit there and suffer and bleed from my fingertips <laughs> and play some. Or sign and, your life away right. to a recording company. Exactly. You don't have or to do I don't need to, you know, I can instead of using poisonous oil paints that I had to grind by hand from like bug, you know, skeletons. It's me to drink. Right, it, it does. But like I can just kind of pick up a computer or pick up anything and it's just so much more accessible to make art and to consume art actually, you know, it really is. And it's like, does that mean that it's dead or does that mean that there's no longer a barrier to entry and that we can all yeah. do it and all yeah. participate? Like, I think is a very positive thing. I do too. I, I think it's our birthright. And I think and it's that, a revival. Like that's very, and I think it should be part of, I think it should be infused in essentially everything about your life. I Completely. think you I'm, can do that now, right? You yeah. I mean, I, I think beauty is, is a prescription. You know, sometimes it's a reviver. I, of yeah. <laughs> so sometimes I go in, and beauty is completely in the the eye of the beholder, right? Right. It, right. So you know, for me, beauty is going out into nature. So I can go yeah. out into nature, and and I can absorb well, that that's experience. Another thing. If you're feeling creatively a little bit down, yeah. So you know, we mentioned collaboration and talking to other people, but going out into nature is such a huge, like much. I mean. I love the Corpse Survivor number two. This is natural. It's very natural. It's got all these natural ingredients. But going out into nature is one of those it is. prescriptions. It, it's, you get oxygen to your brain. All of it is scientifically researched. Like they yes. say, your brain pattern changes when you're out well, there. Well, I mean, think about how nature. we evolved. We evolved right. in, you know, outside. We evolved yeah. in forest, in deserts. Completely. And I mean, well, seeing those colors, like yes. the blue and the green, is yes. actually like changing our brain waves. It really is. You know, it's it really an amazing is. thing. Like, I do that all the time you know just to but also I think that so many people feel so you know stressed about what the art's supposed to look like or what it's supposed to sound like or how right. you're supposed to make and it. And that's like our that article that we read about the woman um oh I loved her article what was her name was it um I'm gonna refer to her oh was it last time the one where she was, you know, doing art, her, her therapist was like, her doctor was like, you need to do art. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And I have it right here. You have it. You have it somewhere. Well, that's the other thing about artists is that when they say that they're creatively dead, like literally a lot of creatives, of artists and creative people have these kind of mental issues that do kind of almost kill them out of that right. whole creative thing. Like kind of the thing that feeds their art is the thing that's also going to Well, yeah, so art. she was doing the art and mm -hmm. as a therapy, you know, her doctor's oh, like, you need to find joy. I remember, yes, how I brought my art back from the dead. The dead. Yes. Yeah, so yes. she was, you know, her therapist, she, she grew up, her dad was kind of a, he was a watercolor Right, painter. right, 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 right. And, and, and she also had this issue comparing herself to him yes. and to other artists. Yes. So he would give her paint all the time. And mm -hmm. anyway, she had all these art supplies. And she had and these she, journals that she was doing. Yes. And, yes. and so she was severely depressed from mm -hmm. like some kind of, I don't know if it was life. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm kind of <laughs> depressing sometimes, as we all know. Sorry. And um, welcome to life, welcome even to though life. we're talking about death. Um, this is the, the paradox yeah, session of the podcast. Divine paradox yeah. session. <laughs> but yeah, so she, you know, the, the artist, you're the artist. The doctor was like, you need to do something. Yeah. 
as a therapy to bring you joy. So she starts doing these paintings and posting them and she's getting a lot of positive feedback. People right. start buying her paintings. And then she was like, oh, she starts comparing her. Yes. Comparing. Like, that was the, yeah. like, that's buying books and, and, and taking Don't classes ask. and trying to, right. to do, you know, human mm -hmm. figures, like human figures are supposed to be right. done. They and all of a sudden, and she's, then like, all of a sudden wah, wah, she's like, wah, wah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. she hates it. Dead she's again. Like, she's done. Dead. You're like, girl, she have a drink. Crash. You know, right? Landing. No, but it's true. Like, I think that the minute you suck the joy out of your art, yeah. the minute you start, instead of collaborating, start using other artists to compare yourself, then you're fucked. I mean, it's over and you need to find a way to walk away from that and just take the pressure off. I mean, and that's half the thing for writer's block. Again, I keep bringing it back to that because I'm kind of, I've been yeah. deep dive into that for the past, you know, month and a half. But half of blocks and killing your creativity is all about the ego. And the ego is because mm -hmm. you're looking at something and you're scared. It's like you're scared of death. You're scared of comparing yourself. You're scared that you don't matter. And that's what's going to literally destroy everything. And you actually don't matter. No, don't. I'm just kidding. No, you're not kidding. No. It's absolutely it, true. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. None of it matters. Have there, fun. There's a meditation podcast that Alex and I listen to sometimes and, <laughs> and, and she'll say, you know, I, I know you might be feeling a little stressed out. It's fine. It doesn't, it matter. doesn't matter. You don't matter. And I'm like, <laughs> and so we say that to each other. We're like, it's fine. It, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. But it doesn't and it matter. Doesn't it doesn't matter. matter. It's true. No one cares. Like, no one that's cares. a horrible thing to realize, but it's also very fucking free. It's because like, no one freaking cares. cares. You know who cares most about you? You. Yeah. Like, that's you. That's fine. Like, that's fine for you to care. But, like, don't sit there and worry about what people think about you. Yeah. Because, really, they don't care. And if they actually care enough to be like, your art sucks, you're like, oh my God, you care. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, you yeah. care enough to insult me. I love yeah, that. It's true. That's the way I raise I like my children. It. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I like that. Well, but it's true. I'm putting that one in my pocket. Right? Put it in your pocket. The minute somebody. Put it in my coffin. Put it in your coffin. You know, it's like a little <laughs> mi miniature coffin that we're wearing. We have a whole outfit yeah. on. We're not going to show it. There's a little purse, purse that looks like, yeah, shaped like a purse. coffin. I got my snake ring, coffin purse. Don't, you know, don't think you're going to invent the coffin purse. Yeah, I don't think so because we've got it we've got it down yeah but but yeah no that's the thing like I think the minute you start thinking that you care that much and if somebody sits there and takes the time to troll you to insult you to you matter to that Say person thank you namaste bitches <laughs> I matter thank you so much I'm gonna take it as a compliment seriously yeah. I mean for damn sure thank so, you thank you thank you so okay another cheers. little drink to that cheers yeah, to cheers. that so to the dead shit. To the dead shit. We're all about it. Speaking of back from the brink, right? Like, I thought, you know, we always talk here about how creativity is not just art. It's all about, you know, turning our lives around and, like, coming back for the brink. A lot of us have, you know, there's a despair that comes when you kind of get to this point where you're like, I worked so hard to get here. And why the fuck am I here? I'm like at the edge of the cliff. Like what? Yeah. What? Don't go like, over the cliff. No, with don't these go over. People. Like what the hell? Like what? What just happened? And we're at that point where we're like, okay, I've done all of this. I worked my ass off, and I'm only here, or I'm here, and, and it's going to start going downhill. What is happening? And we're not alone. Like it's, and this is not just about art, where you work on your painting and no. it sucks, or you work on your book and all of a sudden it falls apart. It's also about creating your life, and also creating a company or an entrepreneur entrepreneurship or it's about creating what? anything it's or about growing, growing anything growing anything. anything exactly so I was researching all these companies that everybody knows that basically I think a lot of us find that some of these companies are untouchable and look up to them as these things of like oh my god these people are so successful they made so much money but damn a lot of these companies were literally on the brink of death yeah and I tried to do a deep dive on what brought them back from the brink of death? Ooh, yeah. Do tell. So, okay, what's like the biggest company? Like, what is the thing we can't get uh, away Bigger from? than the government? Yeah. Apple. Apple. Okay, perfect. Apple. I like that you said that. That is very convenient because that was on my list. I mean, no offense to the government. Because if you, if you said something other. Oh, no, I should have said richer than our government. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's, so That's what I meant. That yeah. I need to be more specific. Yeah. Richer than our government? For sure. Yes. Yeah. So, so anyway, where were we? Apple was definitely on my list. And I'm glad you said that because if you said something else, we would have put in like edit. And I would have been like, no, I'm like, yeah. greater's mm -hmm. ice cream. Yeah. I don't know. No. So 
Apple. Apple almost went bankrupt like 20 years ago. Like, I don't think anybody... Wait, was this when they dismissed... They dismissed Steve, Steve Jobs. Jobs. Yes. And, and this is before they... he came back. Yeah. They were literally going bankrupt. And then they're like, oh, Steve, can you come back? Yeah. And uh, yeah, they were just... They just had lost it. They'd lost the joy. And Steve was kind of the creative... He was the creative. Force. I mean, Fuck he was, he was God. The, yeah. He was the God of Apple. I mean, yeah. he really was. He was. And this is the thing where they're like, shit, Steve, come back. Why? Because he had the vision. He had the creativity. He was the mm -hmm. one who brought it back by making people. He found the why. You yes, know, there's that whole about thing. The why. We did. We talked about the why last time. Forgot his name again. Simon Sinek or S something. Si Simon Sinek. He's one of our pod crushes. Yes. Pod crush. <laughs> so yeah. So he totally found the why. He's like, okay, it's not about what you do. It's kind of why you do it. What do people want? They want to be wowed. They want to know why. That... They want to know, like, every every day you want to know why you're doing what yes. you're doing, right? Yes. Because that's about meaning making. Exactly. And when you can tap into the meaning making process psychologically it's with people, death. it's pretty much the opposite, opposite of, death. of death. Yeah, Completely. I agree. So Apple basically came up with these things that just, they put their whole past behind them. They're like, who gives a shit that we created this little tabletop computer that, you know, was cute and that people kind of liked for a minute. They're like, forget all of that. Forget the fact that Blackberry has got this phone now that they, they've got, you know, all these keys on it. Like, no. Yeah, we don't want to talk about that. Wipe it all They, they out. actually did die. Yeah. They, they're like, let's. A lot of people killed themselves when their stock died. That too. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. But, no, but yeah, they're like, let's take the whole past away. Let's create something that's so magical that people are going to all want it and they're going to be able to create things with this. And that's what they did. And then they did this amazing storytelling where it focused on the user. And then they found this way of making people consume micro content. Like they just revolutionized the way people were consuming music, for example, yes. or the visuals on their phone. It's a very creative, very artistic way it of is. looking at things. And that completely changed. Complete, like Apple, it, and then it, it was like, like, and then it was like, choo, 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 choo. and and you know, and the, and the fact is, you know, maybe five years from now, who knows? Maybe Apple is gone. I don't know. It's but not for us to decide, it's right? It's not. It's not. But at that point, at that time, it was brought back from the brink by this very thing. And I have to say, like, I just came back from South by Southwest, which I haven't heard anything about yet. Yeah, by the way, which I kind of like. You love so to hear it. To me. it. Yeah, it is. It's like, it's, is it's, it contrived or no? You, you know like what it? I really like? Everything's very collaborative. Mm. More than I thought. Like every single session I went to, I was able to shamelessly plug this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and other things like me. Yeah. Um, and I was able to like really talk with really interesting people. I would say that like 25% of the people at South by South Southwest are like super driven, super enthusiastic. And then you've got the ones who like, you, you don't know why they're there. And you're like, that's fine. I don't care. You're taking up space and that's cool. Like it's adding Maybe to the excitement. Maybe they got a free ticket from their friend. Maybe they're on the brink mm -hmm. of death. Maybe. Oh, poor things. Yeah. I but certainly then, wouldn't go to a conference if right? I had a couple no, days left. No. I would go probably to the beach. I don't know. I'd go to the Iceland. Beach. Iceland. That's you. You're yeah. the Nordic princess. I'd go to the beach. But... I, there was a guy there and he was talking about looking for investments and he was talking about all this business stuff. And I was right. like, that's interesting. He said something crucial, which was, you know what? It doesn't matter what the future holds. It matters what you're doing right now. That's the story you tell. Your projections are actually not even that interesting to, you know, investors anymore. Right. Because things are changing so fast. Right. That your company could either be doing something opposite to what it was doing today in five years, or it could be gone. And that doesn't even matter. And I was like, wow, that's such a reality check. Yeah. You know? I mean, it, everything's on some kind of fast trajectory. Completely. And so and those of us who are like, oh, I want to be immortal through my art. Like, that's bullshit. But, but I think what is, what it makes me think about is, you know, just like language or, or anything yeah. that evolves over time and it changes all the time. I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, it's just one of those things that it's, you know, my daughter will say words to me. I'm like, what is that I word? That word. Yeah. And, and it's, it's a word, it's a new word because yeah. it's, you know, language is this living thing. It's nice to have a living organism that you're right. dealing with, but, but also I think you anything powerless. you do, a company, a project, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a relationship, uh, anything like that changes is the same thing. And it's, it's, it's a living, yeah. It, it's but an also, entity, but if it doesn't change, it dies. Yeah, that's the other thing. Like, okay, yeah, I mean, that's the only thing that's for sure, right? Yeah, is that everything change yeah. is the only thing you can really count on. Completely. So, if so. it changes, it dies. If it doesn't change, it dies. If it changes, it may die. 
But that's not even the point. Like, let's I mean, just you might really... die too. I mean, you probably, yeah. Oh, you know, have the drink. Anyway, uh, I just, yeah. Uh, cheers to, 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 uh, just, so another too much goth makeup. Too much goth is it, bleaching into our yeah. skin or something. So yeah, the the mm. the, the lead. So tell put, us another one. The other okay. one that I thought was really interesting was Ooh, which one did you like? Old Spice. Old Spice. I mean, Isn't I have great? to say, like, I mean, that was like the um, what deader is it, than the, dead, right? Like, oh my god, it was do. disgusting. It was like mm -hmm. old grandpa mm -hmm. aftershave mm -hmm. smell mm -hmm. mixed with tobacco. You know, like you. Which, Honestly, though, think about it objectively. Isn't that? No, but I mean, it definitely Come on, that's is awesome. a little nostalgic. It's oh, like super a nostalgic. nostalgic for but me. see, here's the thing: if you stay stuck in the nostalgia, you die. Again, nostalgia is trying to kill static. Me. No, but nostalgia is static. You is. have to keep it moving is. forward with it. Like, and no. honestly, no, this is true. Right? This is a really good segue. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it is. I, like, I see where you're going with this. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that's the issue. And they took it. They took something which objectively, I think. The smell of Old Spice, it's kind of universal. Think about it. It's a universal truth. I mean, come on. <laughs> universal like, truth? It is. Come on. You're going to die. Not... Old Spice. <laughs> and and... <laughs> I don't know. what. Corpse like, Survivor number Corpse two. Corpse Survivor number two? Yeah. No, Old Spice is one of those smells. A universal smells. truth. It is. Come on. Come on. Just don't deny it. Just accept no, it. No, it. It, it is. I mean, it definitely it is. is. I mean, I remember back in the day when I was in grad school and I was like even more pretentious than I am now. <laughs> I thought it was the funniest thing. I was like, oh my God, as a prank, I'm going to totally like put Old Spice in this like old bottle and, you know, and gift it to the most pretentious dude <gasps> I know and be like, oh, it's this custom, wonderful thing. It's so chic. And just... Because you know that <laughs> everybody be like, this. I want to oh, do it. This is so primal. This is so wonderful. This is so classic in a way. It's so new. And it could I be knew. that she secretly likes old spice. I think I anyway, secretly, I think I secretly do. I'm not even ashamed. I don't even care. <laughs> Plus, they did that. Remember that advertising campaign where all of a sudden, like, old spice was funny yeah. and cool? That dude, yeah, like, yeah, was yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, it was like, here's me. Here's your man. Here's me. Here's your man. Old yeah. spice. No. <laughs> you know, and he was so freaking funny and over the top. Yeah. And they took that cheesy side of old spice, which had kind of been precipitating its death. Yeah, it had that like and old death. Old death. Like you were trying to cover that. You know that when like old people smell. when they have like that when they smell like their soup smell. It's nursing like they're dying. Moth like balls. necrotic. Necrotic. <laughs> necrotic. I work in the dental field. <laughs> necrotic is a word that we use it is. for death. Oh, that's disgusting. Oh like my when god. teeth are dying. Oh, stop. They're necrotic. Stop. Oh my god. Okay, by the way, so yeah. I don't know why I have friends necrotic. in the dental. Yeah, exactly. Like I have friends in the dental It's a good industry. band name. It's a good band name. Necrotic. Necrotic. <laughs> Necrotic. Pour your eye all over my body. <laughs> okay. Fucking hell, we're back. <laughs> We're back from the dead. We're back from the dead. Okay, so well, other companies. But now that I've sang the yes. necrotic song, really good. It was beautiful. Way. My was necrotic really song was gross or beautiful. So okay, Old Spice, right? Mm. Phenomenal. So yes, uh, anti necrotic. <laughs> <laughs> it at least covered it's the smell of necrotic. Of coffin necrotizing and, tissue. Oh God, stop! No, You're really horrible. She, uh, okay, mm. it, it's so, but now it's back. Like now it's kind of cool. Now guys are like, oh, haha. Ha. It's like the Axe spray. Remember that cheesy <laughs> shit that they, th like, come on. It's like, same thing. Like, that's... No, I actually want, I, I wish we had some Old Spice right now because right? I would love to, ha. Ha. I See? would love to have a whiff. <laughs> it is a Old whiff. Spice. It's totally a whiff. Um, okay, <laughs> we'll stop talking about necrotic and old spice because I don't okay. want her to say the word again. I won't. Um, I won't. I don't. Oh my god! Done. So Best Buy, another company that was like the worst buy for a while because <laughs> it started just going, you know, like yeah. downhill or like no time. buy, no buy, no buy, or bye bye. Uh, <laughs> so they started what they did to kind of rehabilitate mm -hmm. the whole Best Buy, which could have just gone the way of all these other big box stores. But what they did is they hired people who were like super passionate experts about technology. Yeah, but very specific pieces of technology. And I'm like, that's a really cool way of doing things is how to invigorate yourself is get expert on something. Right? Oh, yeah. Like, that's what we were talking about a couple times ago, like deep dive and, you know, research things and get to know it really well and nerd out on things. And I think that's what Best Buy did is they nerded out on their people. They nerded out on their you know, services that they did. And I think that that was pretty good. I mean, yeah. I right? mean, I went into Best Buy the other day to buy see? See? Uh, a phone charger. Was it the Best Buy ever? <laughs> it was 
was the best buy. It was, it was like, I had no choice. I mean, it was, mm. yeah, it was one of the best buys I did all week. So I could charge my phone and. There you go. Yeah. Beautiful. Text see? my friends. But like, did you see any of the people working there? Did anybody talk to you? No, I mean, I, I was. They don't want to like, fucking shut up. To I don't know. Why about their, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe I didn't look approachable. Oh, that's possible. Were you wearing that makeup? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. No, um, I don't get approached either in stores. Don't worry. I mean, I'm sure you get approached more well, than I do. Hey I'm, guys, I'm here. Hello. I almost got arrested on my flight back to South by Southwest. True story, and I'll tell you okay. why later. Not on the air, but yeah, oh, it was crazy. Jesus. True story. Ridiculous. Oh my God. Insane. I'll yes. update you if you want. And, and, and then my cousin who's flying with me is like, oh, I've literally seen you almost get arrested multiple times since we've known each other. And I was like, oh. She's yeah. always living on the edge. I love that. Brink. On the brink. On okay. The brink. Other company that our kids, speaking of kids and, you know, all this. Yeah. This one's kind of fascinating. I right? Think. Yeah. Lego. No. Lego. I know. It's funny because I knew of Lego. Well, duh. I mean, when we were kids. I mean, I don't even know when that company started. Which a long is time ago. A I long thought. time ago. I mean, yeah. So we've heard about Lego. But then. It was dying. It was dying. Was we never heard was... anything about it. And no. then they kind of. They come back. They come back. And I feel But you like... know why they were dying? This is the best. Tell me. Okay. They were selling shit for less than it cost to make it. Well, yeah, but you have to do that if nobody wants your product. Okay, but I think that that's what artists do, is that artists will yes. radically No, this is a really good example. Right? Yes. Yeah. Well, of course. No, I had a woman walk into the store where I was working, mm -hmm. and she saw one of my fiber frequencies. And you're like, it's fine. She was like, I want it, I want it, I yeah. want it. Uh-huh. And, and I was like, I wasn't even selling that one. I had no. been wearing it. That's why it's so... I want it, I want it. How much, how much, how much? And I was like, it's not for sale. It's my dirty little it's scarf that's been priceless. Wearing. And and so I sold it for very inexpensive because I just wanted stupid. to get rid of her. No, but see that's I was the like, stupid she's thing. embarrassing. That's me. why artists die. That's yeah. what happens. Like we <sighs> underprice our shit. It's true. Like you can't do that as an artist. You really need to factor. So I it. should have said you should have been as priceless, but I'll sell it to you for, for seven hundred dollars at least. Yes. I mean, yeah. it's like, honestly, artists sit there and they undervalue themselves. They don't think about the time. Like, as an artist, as a creative, your time is worth, worth money. So I should have said, how much do you want it? Yeah. 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 I mean, hello. I'm serious. Like, are you going to charge less than somebody who's unskilled, somebody who did something without even thinking about it? Yeah. I mean, think about how little we charge for artistic production. It's crazy and it's not fair. Well, I was listening to today, which I mean, exactly what you're talking about is mm -hmm. Sam Harris. You know, he was on the mm -hmm. Joe Rogan podcast and Joe Rogan go, he does live streaming with, you know, advertising. I was watching Joe Rogan's interview of Elon Musk, which by the way, if we're all going to die as humanity is because of Elon Musk. Yeah. He's going to come the guys fucking insane. He's insane. <laughs> He's insane. <laughs> He's insane. As I know yeah. myself, as like, I spoke yeah. on my corpse yeah. reminder. But Joe Rogan cemented his identity as the best interviewer of all time. Because oh my he God. was able to keep a straight face during yeah. that ridiculous yeah. interview. I was like, are you kidding me? He was me? like, oh right, it's the end of the world and I... It is, and I feel fine. It's the completely. end of yes, the world. Yes, we're very musical today. But <laughs> No, but sorry. I mean, seriously, yeah. so... It's Sam Harris, right? Yeah, Sam Harris. So he's interviewing I'm him. Terrible and, names. and he he basically he actually doesn't, you know, he has a thing where you you pay for his podcast just like you would public radio, right? See your And but he does something. And he says that basically what's happening is because of all the advertising, people are getting used to getting material for free so that's the expectation I know. and so they I don't know. value it as much anyway yes. I didn't listen to the whole thing because I was at lunch and I was knitting and, <laughs> you were you know, valuing and I, your lunch and I was, and, and I was trying to eat and I was trying to you know I was trying to stay alive stay alive. Stay alive. multitasking is the death of creativity yeah sometimes again as well. I'm always doing things that practically kill me but I yes, <laughs> mean across fun. the street regularly which I should not <laughs> But no, I, that's totally it though. Like yeah. devaluing things that should be worth a lot. Ridiculous. Like I freaking hate it when I see something as somebody's like, oh my God, that piece of art is that much. Fuck you, dude. And you, do you know yeah, how much? Fuck you. I mean, seriously, do you know how long it took to make? Do you know how much the materials cost? And, like, and that's it came messed up. from the consciousness. Like you it can't did. Like, repeat it. You exactly. Can't, it's, it's a one it's time not, thing. It's, a one, it's not yeah. repeatable. No, like the number of people I see who want that thing that's like machine made beyond the, you know, more than they want the thing that's hand painted. It's 
so it's, frequent. It's so American. Yeah, but I think it's over. I think it's. I think. I it's, think a lot of. People, I think yes. if you want to talk about things that are dying, I yeah, think that's machine dying. made. I think. I think you've got a point. Like, I think I that's think dying for sure. Like I, having just come back from like weird Austin, absolutely everything was kind of handmade and everything, and that felt good to see. Yeah. But still, like, like there's a little bit of that. But so let's go back to Lego though. So yeah, what so Lego. Yeah. So Lego, not only did they finally see the freaking value of what they're making and start charging the appropriate amounts, amazing, but they also made creative partnerships. They made, um, you know, all of these different, they franchise things yeah. to like Harry Potter, speaking of Voldemort. Yes, yeah, yeah, um, so every yeah. single. And then they, yeah, like every, all these franchises, exactly. Yes. But also I think they st they created this narrative that, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you know, by having your children, you know, build, and access these, yes. you know, hand, eye, brain coordination. Mm -hmm. You know, this is this is an actual developmentally Completely. essential part of childhood, <coughs> and that if you don't have it, your child is missing out on something. So they created this narrative. If your child doesn't play with Lego, they're and, gonna die. And I actually freaked out because my, I have you know a daughter, and, and you didn't give her enough Legos. And I I never gave her one fucking Lego. Shh, you're so she's had bad. no Princess Mom. Legos, nothing. You're and horrible. I was like, if, really if things don't turn out do good guilty? for her, yeah, I'm I do. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, because my friend was like, he, my son just built a thousand piece Lego. Yeah. And, and she was telling and you me, what? like, and it's, it's the basis, of, yeah, and it's the basis <laughs> of engineering and blah, yeah. blah, blah. And I was like, wow, somebody's wow. drinking the Kool-Aid. Yeah, completely. No, I know. It's, I actually do think it's good for kids' brains. It is. I do. It is. No, it's great. Like, any of those creative toys are... And also, but I tell like my daughter knitting, which is the same. Oh fucking thing. no, it completely is. Come on, I mean, yeah. like, I'm laughing at you with the Legos, but it's yeah. so you've done so many creative things with her that were not prepackaged. I'm not worried. It's I, I wouldn't be. I'd be worried, worried about a lot of but other things. I'm not things. worried about that. Yes. Um, so the Lego, they also did like films, and I think that doing those verticals of yeah. entertainment and everything else really wake a brand up. Um, thinking of one more brand, do I have one? No, I suck. Um, that was a lot of brands. That was a lot of brands. No, and they were brands. recognizable, so people could really totally. think about them in, you know, yes. everybody knows Lego, everybody, well, yeah, I don't know about I everybody went with the knowing basic, Old Spice, but it yeah, has been, I, I went with the basic examples, yeah. and I thought no, that it was that good. worked. I, I liked it. So, we're doing kind of a short version today, because well, we wanted to, like, revive I think our we, corpses. Yeah, but I think we should talk about, yeah. that's for homework. We no, should talk we're talking about, about Deepak like, Chopra first. Oh, yeah, Deepak. Because we wanted to talk about glass half empty, glass half full. And are we both yes. half full today? We are. We're, yeah, we're I think so. We're half dead, hour. but we're right? half so, full. Well, so I had read that article about this woman who single-handedly, she was, where was she? She was like in freaking, let's figure this out, Minnesota. That's mm -hmm. why I forgot, because it's like a flyover. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, I'm, so so Minnesota. I'm so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. We might get invited there to do a show. Oh, we might. Oh, my God. What is there yeah. beer there? There's something. Somewhere. There's got to be liquor in Minnesota. Oh, I don't know. There might not be. There might be like... Is the mission still apples? happening in Minnesota? It might be. Let us yeah, know. Let us know. Can you please let us know if Comment. we can get drinks in Minnesota? Yeah, because we will. We'll go. <laughs> we'll go. So there's this super cool woman <laughs> named Kristen Macomb. Of course, Scandinavian name. Oh, I love it. Swedish, right? Yeah. Um, she single, Viking princess. Viking princess. Just, yeah. Cheers. Like one of my sisters. Cheers to Viking princesses. She single-handedly took the museum, the Minnesota Museum of American Art. She was the only employee back in 2009. This place lost... Wait a minute. She was the only, only employee. The place lost its lease. And then she single freaking handedly took this thing back from the brink. Got a space, made it back into a museum, got all these employees, built it back because she thinks it's so important to actually house these varied pieces of work and to like wow. bring life back into the arts in Minifucking Soda. <laughs> I love important. Minifucking Soda. Uh, seriously. And I just thought it was such an inspiring article. Look her up. So we'll put her name up, but it's Kristen Macomb, Minnesota Museum of American Art. And it's incredible. We have to Paul. visit that museum. I think we should. I mean, I think yeah. it's amazing. I thought it was really great how one person can kind of cause this complete turnaround. I mean, just like Steve Jobs did with Apple. Like this woman yeah. is my freaking hero. So that was that short little glass out full. Woo! Woo! Cheers! Cheers to that. Cheers! And now yes. that your glass is almost completely empty, half empty. Yes. Um. Let's go with our friend Deepak. Yeah. So I was listening to Oprah Winfrey. Oh God, she's like the female Deepak. I know. They were like they were in India. I mean, they were just like quintessential. <laughs> like, like, they were just like, like 
Salt oh, they were completely intense. Yeah. Cool. Super salt, like, I mean, super salt, they like, were here vibrating there. up here, and I'm like in my car, like, you know, I'm high on coffee, so I'm trying to keep up. Yeah. You're but, you know, up. they're like, mm, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> they're demigods or whatever. They are demigods, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm like a yeah. demigorgon today. It's fine. It's like whatever. Yeah. I'm a, what do you call it? And uh, um, I don't even fucking Demi know. Demiurge. Anyway. <laughs> so, you know, Deepak was talking about, you know, he... <laughs> <laughs> he was talking about I love it when you can preface something with Deepak was talking. Well, he uh, was. And I, you know, it's funny because he's such a like. You know, he he's he's like part of our consciousness like every day. He is, like he's he like is. like Don dish he tr- soap. He tries to be that dude. I mean, you know, he tries to be he's that like clover milk. You know, he like is. he's the guy. He's a name that, like yeah, when he's you talk, brand. yeah, he's name brand. You know, he's he like is. the seven seven spiritual laws of success. success. You know, all kinds all of about stuff. success. Mm-hmm. So. You know, he basically says that you have to start thinking about yourself as an energy field instead Ooh. of death, a field of flesh. You know, I because, really like that. That's very encouraging. Know, right? I'm like the because flesh, the flesh goes with the corpse thing. That, this freaking field of flesh is just yeah. not working out. No, but for he, me, said, so, he says, yes. look at the room. You know, like what if you took the walls away? The space would still be there, right? right. And it's the same with the human. I like deep as Yeah, and so he talks about us being an energy field. And I love we, it. We are, you know, we're in. We're a field of infinite Dreams. possibilities. Infinite possibilities. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And no, so, you know what? That's awesome. I think that everybody And I was like, yeah. 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 No, my car I almost crashed, but I'm like, yeah, yes. Deepak, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and I just no, wanted I to high five that guy. Yes. I think that that's. It's just so, it's, it's so, so true. deep and it's so fucking simple. It is. So therefore death does not exist. That's basically what he says. Ta-da. That's it. That's it, guys. Yeah. That's it. That's the end. We finished our That's drink. The, it, this is the it's end. It's a dead end. Street. Cheers to you. Cheers. See you next time. Bye.